as, as my wife will tell you, and my kids will affirm, anything with anything other than an on and off switch challenges my technological ability. I thought I wanted to be a litigator, meaning go to court and do what Perry Mason did on television. Got my law degree from the University of Michigan, where I teach, which is a thrill. I was at a firm for three years and did not really enjoy the practice and was considering leaving the law. And I spoke to one of the partners there. He convinced me that I ought to give it a chance because I had worked on a deal with him. He got me an interview there and they hired me. I was in the mergers and acquisitions area and loved every minute of it. I had, I had the great thrill of waking up every morning and saying, wow, I get to do this again and I get paid for it? One of my partners left the firm, he was a litigator, left the firm and joined a beeper company, a paging operation. He asked me if I would represent his company. I said yes. And lo and behold, like four or five weeks later, we were embroiled in applying for cellular telephony licenses. I don't think I'd ever heard the word telephony before. It was pure dumb luck. I first met Barry Edelman across the table when we were negotiating this Detroit cellular, uh, non wireless cellular license, and uh, we were adversaries. All of the applicants in that market said, FCC, we're going to form a partnership. We're not going to have a comparative area and give us time to form the partnership. I negotiated that partnership agreement. He was a deal maker. His creative approach to finding ways to yes actually became my mentor. Once we got through the initial settlements of the top 30, we ended up being the so-called Barry and Larry show. Uh, in which we were, I, I'm glad to say, I'm very proud to say, very instrumental in bringing those parties together. The cast of characters were like the Wild West in the early days of Silly. You had characters beyond belief, all kinds. He had the Grand Alliance, I had Cellular System One, and we were representing each other, and we, we were able to bring those groups together to create 58 out of 60 settlements, which obviously got the industry off much earlier than it would have had we gone through lotteries or th through the litigation. That was a trick. It was, it was, it was a, a lot of compromise. The hours were ridiculously long. Larry, I either lived in his office in Washington or he lived in my office in New York. Fortunately, everything did work out. And to show you how brilliant Larry and I are, we sat there on the sidelines in the next group and Mark Warner used our, our agreement as a model to do massive settlements which made him who he is today. It's worth noting that Barry wasn't only instrumental in the, the cellular settlements, he and his client also were one of the first to create the equipment financing approach with Ericsson, with the equipment manufacturers providing virtually all, in fact, I think it was 110% of the financing for those early cellular systems. And, and Barry negotiated that. I, I think it's also fair to say, and I'm sure many of the other pioneers and wireless Hall of Famers that have worked with Barry would tell you, he, he's been involved in any number of international deals and domestic deals over the years that have really helped a lot of the wireless Hall, Hall of Fame members today get where they are in terms of the, the, the growth of the industry. What this has become is extraordinary. It's far and away the most fun I've ever had in the practice of law. I'm thrilled that Barry is joining me and others in, in the Hall of Fame. His contribution to the wireless industry can't be overestimated in terms of the, the being the, in the background, but getting the deals done that needed to be done to make this industry grow.